Welcome to the History of Studio Tube Cinemation, a.k.a. the STC Digital Enterprise Group Incorporated, headquartered in Canada. Just like version 1 of my History of Sony Pictures Television, I'm going to narrate this history all the way, from the company's humble, beginning on October 8, 2015, following the creation of a new YouTube channel in 2016. This history contains the names and logos of brands like Motion Graphics Network that evolved throughout the history of MGN's owner and also involves the company's music, television shows, movies, and more technologically, visually and auditorily advancing from time to time amid the company's growth. If you have not watched version 1 of my history of Sony Pictures Television, please let me take you through the legend first. Anything in a blue box is a distinct corporate entity, which will usually end with incorporated, LLC, or limited. Anything in a green box is a legally recognized trading name used by a person, a company, or more than one company. Anything in a red box is either an internal corporate division, referred to in company literature, but nothing else, or a brand name used on screen that isn't a legally recognized trading name. The white writing is the line of business in which a particular company is involved. So anyway, without any further ado, let's get to the rest of the video. The history of the STC Digital Enterprise Group Incorporated essentially started off on April 22, 2016, with a YouTube channel named GameSpin Enterprises, started by Jacques LaFortune. There's not really much to say here, except that on October 13th, GameSpin Enterprises was split up into two units. One unit was Game World Entertainment Incorporated, the other unit was the newly renamed Red Arc Productions. The YouTube channel changed its name to Redline Productions on January 25th, 2017. Two more changes to the channel's name were made. One change was Greenline Productions on March 17th. And the other change was Blue Line Productions on March 19th. On April 16th, Blue Line set up a craft learning animation studio, Bright Light Productions, which was renamed to Bright Light Pictures on April 22nd because the Blue Line Productions YouTube channel celebrated the first anniversary of its foundation in 2016. On May the 3rd, Bright Light Pictures acquired a television distribution company named Alphagram Communications Incorporated, formerly Alphagram Distribution, so GameCube and Trove Loopers premiered on YouTube two days later. On May 31st, Blue Line Productions formed a dormant production company, KMF Entertainment. The same date, there was criticism on the Blue Line Productions YouTube channel regarding the use of the Taylor Enterprises logos without the prior written consent of the owner of the logos. However, in order to avoid any confusion, a new production company was formed, New Brunswick Television. On June 7th, Blue Line Productions formed the Motion Graphics Channel, a logo-related content provider. On June 19th, KMF Entertainment was folded into Blue Line Productions as a new entity, Cinemation Productions Incorporated. Bright Light Pictures went in name only for the time being. Five days later, a byline was added to the MGC logo to reflect its new ownership. On July 1st, Cinemation Productions set up its own international production and distribution division, Cinemation International. New logos were introduced for both companies eight days later. On July 14th, Alphagram Communications introduced a new logo. On July 26th, MGC was rechristened as MGN, as it was originally named MGN Originals. On August 3rd, the word Originals was removed from the MGN name and logo. On August 12th, Cinemation Productions celebrated 1,000 subscribers on YouTube, so introduced a new logo. With some color added one week later. On September 5th, it introduced yet another new logo. With once again another new logo one week later. On September 19th, the MGN Cinemation Entertainment Group was created. 
Its divisions included Cinemation Productions, Cinemation International, and a new production company, MGM Cinemation Television, while its subsidiaries included Game World Entertainment Incorporated, Alphagram Communications Incorporated, and New Brunswick Television. On November 7, MGM Cinemation formed a joint venture with WTRU Communications called WTRU Cinemation Productions Incorporated. On November 17, TKD took down his own version of WVC logo bloopers from YouTube which Alphagram Communications distributed. However, WTRU Cinemation Productions Incorporated alleged that a takedown would be the result of a copyright owner rejecting MGM Cinemation's appeal if a copyright claim was created or reinstated for content in any of the group's YouTube videos. On December 19, the MGM Cinemation Entertainment Group was renamed to WTRU Cinemation Media Incorporated, with Cinemation International being renamed to WTRU Cinemation International Productions. WTRU Cinemation Productions Incorporated also changed its logo as well. Alphagram Communications was folded in as a new domestic distribution arm, WTRU Cinemation Television Distribution. It was around this time that Cinemation Productions was split out as a separate entity, Cinemation Productions Incorporated. On January 15, 2018, WTRU Cinemation set up a film production company Cinemation Pictures Incorporated, which then set up its own production division, Cinemation Television. On February 9, it released its first film as produced by a new entity Bright Light Animation Studios, introducing a new logo with a globe. On March 13, WTRU Cinemation Media Incorporated was renamed to Screencast Cinemation Incorporated. WTRU Cinemation Television Distribution was shut down, and WTRU Cinemation International Productions was renamed to Screencast Cinemation International Studios. On April 10, WTRU Cinemation Productions Incorporated was renamed to Screencast Television. On May 15, while two new logos were introduced for both Cinemation Pictures and Screencast Television, Screencast Cinemation introduced its own shield. On June 15, Cinemation Pictures and Television's logos were changed slightly. On September 8, Screencast Cinemation set up its own production division. Game World Entertainment set up Cumulus Entertainment as the first step in the creation of a new company, Game World Cumulus. Then, in November, Cumulus Entertainment was renamed to Cumulus Pictures. Around the same time, the new MGM was established and is now owned by STC Communications Incorporated. Three months previously, MGM used the infamous Peacock design as well as other infamous designs. In December, MGM's logo was changed slightly. Both Game World Entertainment and Cumulus Pictures merged to form Game World Cumulus Communications Incorporated. On January 19, 2019, MGM set up an in-house production division, MGM Studios, which currently controls the intellectual property of its television programming online. Game World Cumulus updated its logo on February 3rd. Screencast Cinemation's logo changed one last time to make it look current. On February 28, Screencast Cinemation Incorporated was renamed to the SC Television Network Incorporated. The successor to this was STC Enterprises Incorporated, which included Studio Tube Cinemation Productions and STC International. Around the same time, Screencast Television went in name only as Screencast Incorporated. In March, the YouTube channel, Studio Tube Cinemation, was created after a handful of changes to the channel's name, including Screencast Cinemation. MGN's logo was once again changed slightly around this time. On April Fool's Day, STC's logo was slightly modified, and a byline was added to the Game World Cumulus logo to reflect its new ownership. On April 6, STC Enterprises acquired the 21st Century Cinemation Film Corporation, which was previously owned by Screencast Cinemation. 
This company included 21st Century Cinemation Television, a production company, a 21st Century Cinemation Television Distribution, a domestic distribution company, a 21st Television, an international distribution company. On April 25th, Cinemation Productions introduced a new logo after being split up from WTRU Cinemation, now named the SC, in late 2017. An updated MGM logo was also introduced this month. In May, a new logo was introduced for New Brunswick Television. STC International acquired a cheap stake in Studio Matsumoto Entertainment Company Limited. Studio Matsumoto introduced a new logo in June after wrapping up TV Tokyo logo bloopers. Then, in July, Game World Cumulus's logo was updated with a teal lens flare background. Around the same time, the MGM Studios logo was changed slightly. Between July 30th and August 29th, STC Enterprises introduced another new logo, dropping the STC shapes from the Studio Tube Cinemation byline. The YouTube channel, Studio Tube Cinemation, was renamed to STC Official. In September, the green lens flare effect was removed from the MGM Studios logo. On October 31st, STC Enterprises acquired a production and distribution company, Evanston Communications Incorporated, which owns an intellectual property company, Franklin License Incorporation. At the same time, the French STC official name was added to the STC official YouTube channel. The next week, the STC Partnership Foundation, LP, was created. Its purpose is to oversee the monetization of content from the Studio Tube Cinemation Library. On November 15th, STC Enterprises acquired another production company, Dayton Hudson Entertainment LLC. On November 21st, Screencast Incorporated introduced its own logo. It even went as far setting up its own TV production division, Screencast Television. Screencast also has an internal corporate division called the FGI 31, which I probably should mention even though I hadn't seen fit to actually show in the diagram. On December 21st, the MGM logo reverted to its April 2019 design. On December 22nd, security concerns were settled with the operations of Cinemation Read-Alongs, another Canadian YouTube channel which started earlier this year in January. Cinemation Read-Alongs was soon merged into the STC official slash STC official YouTube channel. In 2020, the STC Enterprises logo was once again changed slightly. An updated STC International logo was also introduced as well. On January 8th, Game World Cumulus set up an in-name-only company, FetishMuffin.com Incorporated. On March 17th, six months prior to the formation of anti-COVID, a new STC Enterprises Incorporated unit was established. On June 24th, Game World Cumulus announced a handful of new technologies for the next year. It stated that, in light of what happened with its current company between June 24th and July 13th, the new technologies like the Media Shield or the Day Slash Night Glasses would revolutionize the business operations and media experiences of both companies. On July 8th, the STC official YouTube channel was renamed to STC Fetish Muffin. On July 18th, FetishMuffin.com Inc.'s name was shortened to FM.com Incorporated. On July 27th, the old STC Enterprises Incorporated was renamed to the STC Digital Enterprise Group Incorporated. On August 19th, a new logo was introduced for Dayton Hudson. On September 2nd, the new STC Enterprises Incorporated introduced its own logo. One day later, Screencast Incorporated set up an animation unit, Screencast Animation Incorporated. On September 6, STC Digital Enterprise Group set up a television distribution division, Anti-COVID. On September 11, three new logos were introduced for Screencast, Screencast Television and Screencast Animation. STC Digital Enterprise Group already expanded into the music business in 2018. Cinemation Music Group and Turner Music Group were both acquired by STC. 
Kerner Music's record labels include Midwestern Art Records Incorporated, Duloc Slash Alliance Records, a product of a merger between Duloc Records and Alliance Records, and Pacific Records, with Cinemation Music's record labels including Streamcast Records, Cinemation Records, and Victoria Records. Both Cinemation Music and Kerner Music have their own music publishing companies, Kerner slash Nelson Music Publishing Incorporated and Cinemation Music Publishing Group, respectively. On September 14th, the SC Television Network transferred the copyright and trademark holdings of its predecessor, Streamcast Cinemation Incorporated, into an intellectual property company, SC Intellectual Properties Incorporated, which the STC Digital Enterprise Group acquired. On October 11th, the YouTube channel STC Fetish Muffin was renamed to STC Fetish Muffin Official. In November, STC International changed its logo once again. On December 2nd, STC Digital Enterprise Group acquired the John Howard Company, which was originally owned by Streamcast Cinemation Incorporated in Spring 2018. Five days later, the group acquired MCMUA Communications Incorporated. This company includes film production and distribution company Metro Christus and Myers Incorporated and film slash TV animation company United Animators Corporation. Soon after, STC Digital Enterprise Group Incorporated announced plans to move to a new location on Memorial Drive Northwest and West Mount Boulevard Northwest, where the old CBC Calgary Studios were housed, but those plans ended up on hold. On January 6, 2021, 21st Century Cinemation Television acquired an in-name-only production company, Victoria Tour Star Television Incorporated, formerly Victoria Pictures Television, Tour Star Television, and Victoria Pictures Television Distribution. A rather strange thing happened when anti-COVID introduced a new logo one week later. Some of the STC Digital Enterprise Group's television operations were merged into a new company, Epic Pictures Corporation, and as you can probably tell, operated out of Montreal for some reason. The studios seem to have continued operating in the same degree of autonomy, but for legal and copyright purposes, all the work was done by this new company, at least for the time being. The strangest part, though, is that this was completely reversed in February. It all went back to the old way. There were two differences, though. The YouTube channel, STC Fetish Muffin Official, was reverted to STC Fetish Muffin on February 7th, amid the Super Bowl 55 football championships on NFL, on CBS, anti-COVID, went in name only as an organization to stop COVID-19. On February 20th, an Epic Pictures introduced its own logo on February 21st. Due to a power outage experienced by FM.com Incorporated on February 26, Game World Cumulus announced that it is launching its first event at the Studio Tube Cinemation headquarters, entitled Pay to Play. Anti-COVID is currently sponsoring the event with $25 plays, and the arenas established by the STC Partnership Foundation include the Nintendo GameCube Arena since March 5th, the Wii U and Wii Arenas between March 17th and March 21st, and the Sega Genesis Classic Arena since April Fool's Day. Anti-COVID introduced a new logo on April 9th, while being transferred into the STC Partnership Foundation three days later, following the formation of its Human Vaccination Center as the event progresses, with an upcoming Sega Genesis Classic Tournament on April 29th. Finally, from April 18th to 19th, STC Fetish Muffin provided a deviant art link to Fetish Muffin's cage, which FM.com Incorporated currently owns, with FM.com providing a YouTube link to the STC Fetish Muffin channel, and that's basically it for now. Special thanks to Blue MGMK for making this historical overview possible. Links to the Under Maintenance Studio Tube Cinemation website include stc.ca in Canada, stc.fr in France, stc.de in Germany, stc.ie in Ireland, stc.co.uk in the United Kingdom, stc.dk in Denmark, and more. Also, thanks to my supportive viewers, even those currently surviving a human outbreak.
They could probably learn a thing or two from my internet resumes on YouTube between 2016 and 2021 or DeviantArt from 2019 to the present day. Ah, uh, speaking of DeviantArt, for those of you who subscribe to this channel for logo-related and other videos, and for those with a link provided who watch Fetish Muffin's page for foot fetish pictures, I'm afraid to say that you can't expect any more logo bloopers videos until the summer when I hope to continue the background plan where we left it last to produce beautifully animated sequences and tell thought-provoking stories that critics rave with the added stipulation that the sequences can either be 2D, CGI, or stop motion. Details in the video links provided. Part of that, I hope you enjoy the video.